Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Special thank you to all those that subscribed and signed up for the journey. Speaking of that journey, let's continue it here today by looking at my second e-bike, the Cy Russia Ranger. The Cy Russia Ranger could not be more different from my first review, the Fido T1, which is linked below if you missed it. The T1 was a utilitarian cargo bike with practicality, simplicity of use at the forefront of its design. Today's bike, the Ranger, is a purebred, all-terrain beast. I've had the Ranger for about four months now. A few of you would have seen it over on my camping channel where I used the bike alongside a trailer tent, but even in that video I couldn't help but detach the trailer for some off-road fun. This bike does not want to be held back. <laughs> it practically begs to be ridden hard. Now, before we go into my experience with the bike and opinions, let's take a look at the specs. The bike is 193 centimeters long and 105 centimeters tall. Good for riders from five foot seven to six foot six with a quite high inseam of 30 inches and weighs in at uh, 34 kilograms with the battery installed. You can lose four kilograms by removing the detachable battery for lifting, transporting, etc. The load capacity is 150 kilograms. The aluminium frame is supported by both front and rear suspension, something that sets this bike apart from all the others I've ridden so far. Up front it's pretty standard air suspension with lockout and adjustment, and at the rear we have soft towel set up with air suspension, 165 by 750 pounds, three mags for those more knowledgeable than myself in these matters. Again, it's an adjustable shock. Now the wheels, they are chunky boys, 26 by 4 inches to be precise, very grippy and ideal for muddy terrain. Taking a look at the handlebars, which sit at 27 and a half inches wide, we have Logan hydraulic brakes with 180 millimeter discs using Logan anti-slip levers, the standard motor shut off of course, Buttons for the light and horn. Here's the horn sound for those interested. They're cleverly integrated into the same unit up front. As a note, there is a backlight which has its own integrated on off switch. And on the right, we can find the gear selector for nine Shimano gears and the optional twist throttle. Here in the UK, it comes as an accessory. You can fit it uh, if you're using the bike off road. In the centre of the handlebars we have a beautiful full colour smart display. The display unit has a 3.7 inch LCD screen and three buttons to access all the information you need. That's customization for speeds depending on how you pedal. You can change the screen brightness and cycle through the odometer, trip computer, uh, max and average as well. Also displays the speed, power assisted gear you're in and battery as a percentage at all times. And lastly, I'll talk a bit about the power specs of the bike. The motor is 750 watt rear hub cassette, electronically limited in some regions, such as the UK, to 250 watts. Battery is 52 volts, 20 amp hour LG lithium. Calculate that to be about uh, 1,040 watt hours. So the power lives up to the appearance of the bike as well. Speaking of the battery, it takes five to seven hours to charge and is good for 800 cycles on paper which is pretty standard on these bikes. Uh, it is also IP65 waterproof. The bike is equipped with a torque sensor, which tells the motor when you are pedaling and how hard, rather than just sensing the movement of the pedals. This gives you a natural feeling of assistance and almost immediate assist when starting from a standstill as well. About one second. On some twist throttle bikes I twist to accelerate from a standstill as I know the motor will take a second to actually kick in. On this I don't feel the need to be doing that. The 25 amp controller also does a great job of pulling current from the motor giving you as much power as you can get out of this thing. In the UK it is limited to 15.5 miles an hour, but in the US it is advertised as 26 miles per hour. With pedal assist range of 56 miles, 37 miles for throttle only. Now with all that out of the way, uh, let's get to my experiences with the Ranger. First up, let's all agree the bike looks amazing. It is a beast. <laughs> when I unboxed it, I was very happy with the build and the style of the bike. It feels extremely solid, inspires confidence when riding it. 
I personally went with green for the colour as it was the most striking, almost like uh, a Lamborghini or something. You want something that stands out. But there are white and black options and they also look great. As you can see, the battery neatly integrates into the down tube, leaving a sleek appearance. There is a key and a switch to release the battery. It's maybe not as easy as on some, but um, it only takes seconds. You have standard accessory mounts on the crossbar, or top bar if you like, for your water bottle or pump or whatever you want. For me, the bike is a very comfortable fit. I love the position of riding it. Uh, the ride is great. Off-road, the bike is very at home. It irons out small bumps uh, with all-around suspension, does a great job. You stand a lot on trails on a bike like this and really feel like it absorbs the terrain. Uh, big grippy tyres also do a great job in the mud. On the road, it does a fine job, uh, but the fat tyres are less of an advantage. I would liken it to driving my truck with its uh, big BF Goodridge mud tyres on the road. It takes a little getting used to, but it, it's perfectly fine. Another point worth making is that this is a chunky and heavy bike. Definitely something to bear in mind if you would be transporting it to the trails uh, that you want to ride. One thing you guys wanted me to mention is hill climbs, and this is the best I've tested for that task. It never feels like it's struggling. Of course, you won't reach your top speeds, but um, the assist helps a lot, and you never feel like you're wanting more. Due to the nature of the bike, it doesn't come with mud flaps, uh, but you can buy them as an accessory, just like you can get a rear rack, making it more practical bike. But I think if you're looking at this bike, uh, practicality isn't your main reason for buying. That'll be having lots of fun off-road. So if you've got this far, the question you're asking is, should I buy the Cyrusha Ranger? Well, if you have the money, it's not a cheap bike, and I mean that both in terms of cost and build quality, and you want a load of off-road fun, and you're not using it as a commuter, then yes, I've spoken to a couple of people that have pulled the trigger after seeing my last video with the bike, uh, and they are just as impressed with the Ranger as I have been. Also has a two year warranty on the bike and one year warranty on the battery, which is nice too. The combination of tires, front and rear suspension and the power management make you really want to ride this bike, which is, you know, the best thing to have in a fun bike. I'm really hoping to get some time with another Cyrusha bike soon, as I have been so impressed with the Ranger. So if you want something a little less extreme <laughs> and more practicality, keep an eye open for that video. Uh, but for now, I'll say thank you for watching. Um, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. I have a lot in the pipeline for this channel and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye for now.